Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the uh, Song and Style Saga here on the uh, Lord Master channel, which in this particular Crusader Kings 3 series as we're in the mid uh, 900s. And we have recently gone to a great adventure. I mean, while there's still activity over in Greenland and beyond, but we went on a Viking world tour, so to speak, from Andalusia to India. And we even gone to other major cities to raid, such as Cordoba, Rome, Samarkand, Alexandria, Cairo, Tanjavur, Lakshmanavati, Patliputra, and Delhi even. We just only followed where the uh, rivers take us, as long as we're well supplied and, and that could be possible. Because with her, anything is possible. Especially with the supply duration and the uh, not just the duration but also the uh, capacity yes that's the reason why we were able to make this possible while well, I should be more and more focused on being an administrator as I haven't done too many stewardship related events that would help me get more ex lifestyle experience or even perhaps a, a park or two Because I'd like to be an administrator, which seems slightly contradictory knowing her background as a aggressive, murderous, viking, explorer, berserker, irritable, and she's, she's all that, but and having an administrator to it just makes it sound like, uh, hey, at least she tries to care, alright? She knows she has angered many vassals, but a few of them are slowly coming around. But there's only very few powerful vassals, because all of them have been swallowed up by this ever-expanding uh, sub-realm of Viken. Led by uh, Thorin, not to be confused with myself. And because you've got so much land for yourself, I might as well just give you um, Yamta land. At least that'll make you a little happy, since I'm giving you a uh, title, so that way your children can... Inherit and split it up amongst yourselves. Give me a moment. I had to take a drink. We'll hold the court in just a minute because we're registering two things. One, bunch of prisoners that are going to be ransomed. And two, prisoners that will be recruited. Yes, those foreigners from far away lands are going to live here. Some of which may serve in my army, so they don't go away anytime soon. Including one or two uh, children that is of foreign origin that I may raise personally, because I never really, you know, try to be a mother and raise my children. I leave that to the other guardians. And also, uh, the stress related events. Yeah, you were near death, so I decided to get you out of here. By get you out of here, I mean forcibly recruited. Because, who knows? And forcibly recruited you, because, interestingly, despite the fact you got lover's box, but... You are the first Chinese person to have stepped foot in Scandinavia. Just want you to have that notoriety. I mean, not unless you want to go back to your husband, and that's fine. Courage to protect ones. Not to mention she's a Buddhist, which we consider them as evil, but they consider us as hostile. I sit brooding on my throne, my heart heavy with memory, mourning over things I did years and years ago. How often do I lash down in rage? Has my wrath been well spent or misdirected? Have I ever, tr ever truly done the right thing? My head throbs. Why would Odin task me if ruling if he knew it would make me this miserable? Hmm. 
Aslog will surely support me. Recruited him because reasons. I mean, you're in the army now, like it or not. Which reminds me. <laughs> and with you here, you are here, forcibly recruited you, because I know what I'm going to do with you. Just stick around, alright? And now we've got this woman who... Fresh out of the dungeon, which she was near death, so we had to get her out of here and just say, Hey, I know you want to forge a brooch for me and is considered by a master by your peers. So I'll be willing to sponsor for you. Just watch your step now. Yes, Havamna, which is also known as the Saka, which they came from the kingdom of Kotan. Which we didn't raid, Kotan. And there was a reason why we brought that woman over here. Well, because he's born here. In the law of the land, it says that you should be a citizen here. But not in this case. And plus, I'd like to have his guardian. You can keep your culture, but I'll... Make it turn into one of ours, in a way. <laughs> As for you, since you're another courtier, you are also recruited here, in which I also made you demand that you convert to our faith. And you are the heir of uh, the Rusta of Kanata. <laughs> you are the prince, but you're of our faith, but you get to keep your culture. Tell your mother passes away, which she's doing fine, despite like she's drunkard and uh, bottom of a bottle. What is this character drowns out there, passes with the bottom of, of the bottle? What a sad sack. Plus, there might be some use for you around here. Anybody else? Have I remembered how to force me recruit on? We brought him here because consecrated blood, flexible leader, despite the fact that he's melancholic. Hope if he'll be better. So you could say he, he would represent the, the Jayan. We brought people of strange faiths in here. But at least one of them should be sacrificed. But before we do that, let's hold the court. Over the last few days, I heard mighty tell of a hero of the peasantry who has won the hearts and minds of the common people through incredible deeds and matchless spirit. This hero, who goes by the name of Hastin, has been traveling the has been defending the small folk from the Sami raiders has now traveled all the way to Nidar signal to me. There is no doubt that Hastein, Hastein is a great hero. However, my court's enemy do not elevate a counter beyond their station. We need him. He should be rewarded with a place in my household. The next petitioner is evidently somewhat strange as court as I do not recognize him. In the eyes of Hitogi Aslog, I've been on them since they first entered. My lady, I have come to declare that the people of, of Lofoti are refusing to pay the tax here of levied upon us. In times past, our land and people were granted rights and privileges, which a recent actations ignore. We request to address our concerns fairly, or else. As much as I'd like to get this, but that ain't gonna work. Hmm. 
<laughs> That's a great way to kill my stress. Just be lazy and says, give them what they want. What do I care? Maybe I should do that. I've been under a lot of stress lately. I should like a real cut them. I miss all this stuff against oh. Freya, who I thought was a prisoner in house arrest, somehow appears before my throne. My lady, surely the food served me in my prison rooms is far worse than the standard of what you would serve a respected guest. Or is this truly the best your cooks could do? I should like a roast swan for my dinner now. Oh, I think it runs in the room. My apologies, my lady. I was guarding her, but she was so charming, she duped me into letting her out. What? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> That's an idea. House arrest means dignity. Let them roam the ground. So all prisoners who are in house arrest can have a permanent effect for the rest of their lives that will be allowed to go outside a little. But of course, under supervision. For once, I show a little mercy. Oh yeah, and another thing. When we went to raid all over the world, including in India, we also got this Paula statue. It's rather strange that here in Europe, you would see this very foreign statue that we've got. Which was created by um, uh, a Chinese woman for the uh, for the Pala ruler. And then it was inherited down the line. And then claimed by House Pala for herself. And then, actually, this is like this was inherited, and then seized by, seized by me, I should say. Now I got two statues. Whoops. Um, put my mother's statue over there. And put the Paula statue there, as it should be. This is the best that it can do. Right, now where were we? Who's going to be sacrificed? I bet we don't have any lighter rulers. Oh, I know what to do. Well, guess what? You're going to be sacrificed. Because you are married to her. And those who are children should be moved to house arrest. Yeah, that means I'm getting my stress up. But not to worry. Because I got so much money to spend that I can kill it. I'll go talk to my confidant. That's one. Actually, no. We'll not lose stress because I'm lazy. Ah, come on. But at least I'll try to... It's been a while since I've done such things. Once I return from the hunt, then... We will go to um, something majestic about the way the heart gazes across the landscape. From behind the bushes, I raise my bow. I silently glance over my courtier, Brahma Deva, to see if doing the same.
I'll bring it down. No. I'm not giving that to you. Because we've chosen that person is the one to be sacrificed just to make her mad. But keep in mind, we do not have direct contacts, but some people do send messages that they want some of the, their people back. The Paral of Court. Oh, it's Brahmadeva again. Yes, Brahmadeva, the uh, Kanalji. Or to be exact, yes, he's Kanalji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am judged harshly towards... I'm judged harshly for my hospitality towards Brahma Deva, the criminal, who is avoided by most everyone on account of their wicked faith. My failure to condemn and continue proximity to this irredeemable fiend is perceived as open tolerance, tarnishing my court's reputation in the eyes of the elders and the faithful. They force my hand, and now I must decide whether my courtier's crimes outweighed my affections for him. Surely something must be done. Are courtiers really so hard to replace? Yeet. Again, your wife's far from you. You're the only person here. As a reminder, let's see, six. Oh, it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna be this kind of person. It's not my place to judge, though I regained the harbor's criminals for five years. <laughs> he remains. We brought him here for a reason. If somebody tries to spread Buddhism, Hinduism, or Jainism in here, then we may have an issue. She gets a pass because she's inspired. So, because she's working on a uh, brooch. Here's a stress killer. Guards, seize what Yavalats me needs. Somebody wants to kill me. Well, I suspect it's one of my rivals, but it's got to be either Horakanuta, or Hakan, or Frodi. Yeah, you can have her back. You can have her back. Only the five circles of man and animal alike. Guess who? It's you. Maybe a poet and all that, but she'll become a widow. Almost there. Come on, people. Do some good. By Siddhartha, man, leave me alone. In order to leave her alone. Two dukes.
he's been expanding his room lately. Sometimes I wish I could fight you in a rivalry war, but no. We can't do this because the highest health has us are equal to uh, dungeon rank, so that's not possible. Oh, it's, I forgot about that. It's these two areas. I forgot about Visbia. Who's that you're married to? Landed. Who? It's true. Okay, they still do. It's gonna be an elective. <laughs> Thought of an idea, which is basically restructuring everything. I can't upgrade this further because it does not have fortified travel holding. Neither the holders or the Kansas culture geek discovered any of the uh, Romanesque innovation for this sort of thing. Okay. Upgrading everything here. No need for a dedication. So we sacrifice the Re over there. The king, if you will. Just improve relations. Want no better idea. Got blasted. Hang on. I'll recruit her. reasons for that is I'm gonna raise her personally as uh, as I said before I never tried being a mother to my children but at least I could try to raise the ones personally and the time to be raised the right way Raising two completely different children of foreign origin. Zero percent chance that my ideas are poor. I guess nothing happens. Oh well. That was the thirty percent part. A dull man, but he'll do. What's going on down there? There goes Clementine's Dome of Lapland. How dare you! You stupid man! Gonna throw that man into jail. He's one of the agents. Is it possible to revoke a title off of him because he committed a crime? No, this is an act of tyranny.
I had a hook on that man. This coming December. Here's what I'm going to do when he grows up. Now he's going to serve at a Varangian Guard for a while in his first years of his youth. But I'm going to... I don't know if it's possible. I was about to say, give that man some concubines, but... I don't know. Because he's not a landed ruler. Yet. Oh, it needs about one more, one more activity, and then we reach the integration phase. Oh, come on, you're almost done. Just stay alive a little longer till you finish this thing for me. So, we'll go to the Great Hall just to help you out on this little thing. You want. I show around my Great Hall taking. Great pride in its luxury and various riches on display. But Melisphere pauses and goes awestruck, examining my Jotning's Estrid's regalia. Ah, very fine, Lich. Could, could I use its metal? Will be of higher quality. This is my mother's. It's a masterwork regalia. Perhaps in the future we'll find someone who would be willing to be inspired to find, um, regalia. I can make regalia. That'll be much better than my mother's. So, okay, fine. That brute you're working on, it better be damn good. I should repair all of these. Cannot reforge artifacts on it. To go okay, good to know. <laughs> because should we ever, should there ever be a day that we retire this weapon, that we could put it on display. Just repair everything. Leave that rock alone. Yeah, everything's fine. Just only repair the important ones. We're just waiting for one more activity that someone's got to do. See the catalyst progress down below? We're waiting. It's going to happen. You can have them. Check the prisoners again. Who, what, where? Her. Unfortunately, she's already married. Very, very unfortunate. Because you see, she's got an inheritable trait. Out of all the prisoners we took, we took the one that's inheritable. That boy is an exception. Yeah, I'll let you out. You've been punished enough. Told you not to join the plot. And another thing. At least we help you force the boat. In fact, my money is good. I'll let you out with a hook. It's something we gotta do often.
parlaying with pirates. Oh, we had these before. Does that mean we're going to get more? Yep, we did get more. <laughs> Mimir's late visit. A few days ago, I had an intense conversation with a member of my own. In rare terror events, they bested me with a clever insult. A slight to which I had no response. Just today, while reviewing military reports, an ingenious reply suddenly cut me. Curse you, Mimir. Uh, it may be the wisest of all gods, but your aid comes oh, too late. Why does Mimir torture me so? The board berserker. Behold, I am Bursi the doll. Bring me tankards of ale, women, and pudding. Lest you dare tempt my wrath. The man screams at the guy again. Evidently, this massive warrior is bored, looking to start trouble. Perhaps his rage would be better put to use better in my ranks. Is there no one dares to face me? Cowards! What I wouldn't give for a good brawl. No one calls me a coward, you lewd bar. You're gonna make a you're gonna make a big mistake taking on the world's strongest one. No. Percy and I stalk around each other, each wearing our options. He hefts a fearsome sword, while I grip my own sword of the Valkyrie. Or well, Valkyrie. I don't have to point that. This deadly weapon feels cool and waiting in my grasp. This might be only to tough first blood, but that doesn't ease my nerves. Oh, this is a stupid move. Let's see how you do about your sword. I'll attempt this out. With a powerful blow, I'll try to remove his weapon. One colossal powerful cleave from my sword is almost just enough to wrench the sword away from him. But he just manages to recover. Suddenly shifts direction, throwing himself sideways to a powerful cleave I'm just barely able to dodge. My form is deteriorating fast. With numerous unexploitable gaps. His stance is passable. Still holding off my blow as well, but he seems close to faltering. Is that the best you've got? You can't even hit me. Baiting my opponent to exhausting himself seems to work well. First answer is a ferociously powerful cleave, following up a successful blow if I attempted to kick me. I dodged sideways, slamming in a quick slash on, the, on his back. As he passes, my opponent tumbles to the floor. The man tries to stagger up, but the swift blow from my sword keeps him down. I let loose an audible sneer to let him know that his time is up. I get a muffled yield from my choice. I am victorious. You're stronger than you look! His voice. The man lies bloody on the ground. His rage saves from him. I'd be happy to fight by your side. Together we'd be unstoppable! He shouts. I'd be honored to fight alongside you. My prowess skill just increased more than it needs to be. Togear comes in age. I'm proud to say my son no longer has a child, but as an adult, with sufficient tutelage, and even a child has displayed a little natural inclination towards diplomatic influence, such as Togear. You can truly understand. We have an excellent grasp of all manners of etiquette, and understanding of all kinds of entertainment, and the elegance to go with it. He will have little trouble navigating life at court. A charismatic negotiator. Excellent. One second. Just 
still here, huh? Again, we're keeping you here because you are the heir to that land, which one day you'll inherit, and you will spread that faith over there, into the land far away from here. In fact, this promise is seven. Forbid him. He needs to stick around for a while. I'm gonna give him a position at court somewhere. Then you gotta put something to use. Well, where is it? What would he be good at? Out of both old people. Something that would be a bit unfavorable, to be real honest. This is a stupid idea, but. Yeah. Yep, knew it. Terrible, but it says the slight sound effect. It's just I needed him in that position. So that way he could stay at court for just a little while until he finally gets to leave and goes back to his home as one of ours. You know, faithful and all that. Unless I could disinherit him, which of course is no chance of that happening. Let me see those other courtiers that are not of our culture. And those that do not have Lower's Box. Don't want to have that in my conscience. Too bad I can't force it. Because what I was about to say is... Like, well, damn. Because you know she's here, but... That man is... Oh, he's actually my prisoner. <laughs> because I thought about... Well, I think she should marry my son. So that way his children can inherit the land that... She's going to inherit, and in turn, my, my, uh, dynasty is over there, far away from me. That's an idea. That's an idea. Oh, she's going to resent me for this. I'll lose the stress, but since, uh, he's a Jain, which we, which we view that as an evil faith to us, because that is the complete opposite of our faith of what we believe like like we believe you know that war and violence and all that stuff is kind of you know then this is the complete opposite so we're gonna sacrifice them be divorced she'll resent me for this and then and she will be the one this Rajkumari will be marrying to my son like it or not Since you are in my court, that means you will marry my son immediately. But it should be noted that, um... It's like, yes, she'll inherit. What's that line of succession like over there at the, uh... It's three kuta. It's a county. This is the holder. Nice succession. There's nothing we can do about that, but at least it's a bit notable that she'd be marrying this woman of uh, Kashmiri origin. British prestige gained for both of you. So I don't know what it'll be like, but that's the uh, first step.
marrying a total foreigner that we took prisoner and now you're here. And you likely probably dislike him. But do not worry, you won't see him for long. Ah, crud. Should have, uh, sent a friend you got before marriage. But, eh, he'll be alright. I think he'd be more useful around here. Not to mention the children that he'd be having on his own. He should be the one to stabilize things here. And also I encourage that man to have more children just to add up the uh, living members of our dynasty. Over here, my lady, my beneficiary Yavalat's raised me over wide wind. I've told many days and nights, and finally my work is done. She presents me with an object wrapped in cloth as I lift the fabric my eyes grow up. An ornate brooch of masterful craftsmanship. It consists of jasper, uh, colors from, mounted on a brass fastener. Ooh, strong romance scheme power. Again, of Amna Saka origin. Something you do not typically see around here. If dread gain is fine, so put this on. Might come useful one day. I mean, I'm not romancing anybody. This feud with Cornwall. Though I doubt it at first, I'm becoming convinced through the gossip court that he wants my head. All because of a killing. All of Sogatsal is game to him. Biter associated with me, and this hatred has seeped from the head down to his entire worthless family. I mean, I. This is the house six of Yadapoda. That's who we're infuting with. Just having running through with a rival family. But they will regret this. So now he becomes my nemesis. So hostile schemes against Targa so will be slightly more likely to succeed. Brutal field. The settlement phase is in transition. Integration will start in 90 days. I wish I could start a rivalry war. Of course, the other alternative is, why don't you just conquer the whole damn thing? I mean, that'd be ideal. Say. <laughs> it's like, now here's a place that my son can inherit. Inherit. Um, that I should grant the titles to. Cornwall. Conquer. Defeat him. Yes. That's an option. We'll weigh that in soon. It'll make the electors more likely to vote for Togir than with than with the other man. And plus I'll give him those concubines of foreign origin. Son of Thorin must rule. In 30 days. More of those have just popped up that relates to Greenland over there and beyond, but please wait. Now it has transitioned into integration. Background changed behind it. So, here's how it goes of how to um, have these cows towards marginalization. 
like if you go towards marginalization. It's largely failures, including climate changes in North Atlantic, which hasn't occurred yet. So, if you want to go to subsistence, you would have to uh, do these successful things. Well, you ought to be careful with those choices here. So, in these phase effects, so, so here's a little thing. Thanks to a successful settlement phase, Greenland settlements are well connected with the North Atlantic political and economic networks. Thanks in part to the export of luxury goods, particularly war cyberry. Meanwhile, peaceful relations with the uh, native inhabitants also leads to an expanded trade and cooperation. cooperation. Greenland is thriving enough. In fact, there's also a far greater interest in, the lands, in exploring the lands beyond. However, all good things will have to come to an end. Greenland is still small and vulnerable to societal shocks from political and economic changes also that could bring about a subsistence phase. If these shocks are disruptive enough and the settlements are unable to adapt, Greenland will instead slide into the marginalization phase, which is something you would want to avoid. And what is marginalization? Um, this is one of the phases. The Greenland settlements are reliant on outside help for survival. Yet they are often ignored by the polities in Northern Europe. The formerly robust industry that revolved around the export of luxury goods, particularly war cyber, is in serious decline. Relations are also fraught in distrust, even conflict. Eventually things might reach an equilibrium as the settlers will adapt to these new circumstances and pull themselves into the uh, subsist phase. Otherwise they'll fall deeper in the spiral of decline into another marginalization phase. So now, here are these current effects for this current phase. It's still the same for war with slightly reduced mercenary hire cost, friendly territory re let me reinforce and read up. The uh, promote culture proceeds faster in the struggle region and the effects for those involved, uh, it's still largely the same. The fae effects where interfaith merges are available between involved characters, particularly the Scots and the Northern Irish. Unless they're all Norse by then. And then there's these other effects, which, again, it's largely the same. Rather than anything else. So you would want to go to subsistence rather than marginalization. But heaven forbid, you get into marginalization and it's going to keep going and going and going in that cycle. And yes, it does have negative effects. And subsistence in its phases is also a bit negative, but it's just going to be good while it lasts, basically. Just take what you can get. Twenty-two percent chance. Construct a temple just for piety gain. Sponsor a well hunt. Sixty-four percent chance of succeeding. And then the wars hunt. Eighty-four percent chance. We can improve that. And send an expedition to the west. How about my son? To Vinland. We need to increase its viability. That's like we should just increase the viability a little more and more and more. Then I will at least try to attempt to build an outpost to uh, Vinland. Not any of you people. It shall be my son. I'll appoint him as expedition leader, which he's very much willing. 
I know you're an impatient man, but if you encounter any natives over there, which is highly unlikely, at least you could try to negotiate with them. I will gladly to accept your offer to appoint me as leader of the upcoming expedition to the Western Seas. The thought of going on an adventure like this excites me. I'm grateful for your trust in my abilities, and I promise I will not let you down. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let's hold a modest feast. So we can try to improve relations with the vassals a little. Curious. I know there's still someone that wants to murder me, but be careful. It was such a pleasant feast, but then he showed up. Can I not have a single evening on the solid body of the invasive stench of Hodakanuta? Worst of all is that the nasal grounding his voice sounds to me. Why the sour face still run? He makes me want to punch him in the face! Uh, it appears these whalers were unsuccessful, they unable to kill any whales. An extremely disappointed as well. But such outcomes are not unheard of. And all they hope that next time the wares are higher luckier or more competent. I gained a bit of stress because I'm raffle, so I was a little bit pissed. Haste to inlink down, find myself deep in conversation with my charming son Togir. He inquires about my uh, opinion on court alliances, a subject he deeply interested in himself. That's a subject that fascinates me as well. There we go. Friends. You see where the arrival of my ships carrying laborers, supplies, the Greenland. Work's begun on construction of the Nin Temple in the Greenland Sunlets. What's complete, they will inspire and comfort the Greenland's faithful there, and provide them a place to pray to the gods and gather as a community. Excellent. I would have to say those effects, as compared to the settlement phase, that's actually not the same. It's actually an improvement, I believe. So now they're off to the wars hunt. Yeah, I couldn't send a ranging guard because I would love to have them with improved warlike court here, but I guess it's not possible. But plus one prowess or marshal doesn't hurt before he goes off to explore. Just make it sure. An attempt on my life. This is undoubtedly the work of that spineless Karahaka. Should have known. He was responsible for this. Attempted murder. When my son returns from Vinland, I'm going to send him away. And my husband finally came back. Good. Good timing. Hey! Get back over here. I need you here. Okay. Today is the day that the expedition I've organized will set off for Vinland. I've come to the harbor near Dars of Binnefell. The expedition is none letter than my son, Togir, who I personally handpicked to be its leader. Hopefully my faith in his ability should be well placed. Togir assures me that the crew is in good spirits and that they are ready for this great adventure. I can only hope that nothing goes wrong in this trip, that he and his crew returns to great success, whether that is bountiful treasure, trade opportunities with locals, new discoveries, or something else. Safe journeys. Thank you. Need you here. Skeletons. A messenger bird brings me a message for Togir with an update about his expedition to Vinland. Togir said that while 
scouting an area, his crew came across the remains of several skeletons. They were covered by curious, few curious trinkets, some of which were little worth. Others appeared more useful, like jewelry and tools. After further investigating the area and finding no sign of recent human activity, Togir decided to bury the skeletons and take some of the more useful materials from the site. An interesting discovery. It's a good outcome. When he returns, we're going to go to war against Cornwall. Conquer Cornwall. And I will place my son over there to rule. And I will give him those concubines of foreign origin. That may or may not have inheritable traits. Just whatever that is more convenient to us. By their very nature, Ting meets can often be extremely boring. If tempers don't play or no one gets dramatic, then it's just a long list of low-ranking freemen discussing petty affairs and standing out of rank. Yet there's joining on the card to be here, growing older every second, watching the men and Nidales talk to each other, death, wishing for a war to save you from this living hell. I could be doing such useful things this time. Daydreaming about strategy. Yeah. Daydreaming about a future war against Cornwall. A messenger bird brings a message from Togir. With an update about his expedition to Vinland. Uh, Vinland. According to the message, he has come to contact with a small band of locals led by a certain Kopit. Despite the language barrier, it appears these locals have peaceful attentions and wish to trade. The members of Togir's expedition are divided on what to do next. Some don't want to give the locals any weapons or tools that could be used against us. Others argue it is important to earn the locals' trust to see what valuables they might wish to trade. Yet others feel these locals are naive and it's, so it's better just to steal from or kidnap them. I wonder what Togir decided to do. Knowing this young man, he is a man of diplomacy and had an interesting conversation with me recently just before he set off. I think he sensibly tried to trade with Kopit's people. Oh, this is a different faith. A different culture. Look at that. He's of the Mikak culture. I'll go. They are dexterous fishermen, storytellers, and seasonal migrators. This is a culture tradition exclusive to them, as it says here. This culture lives sustainably by observing the cycle of the seasons. It's summertime. People stay near bodies of water, like rivers, lakes, and the coast to feed on a marine diet. In the winter, they go into the woods to hunt and forage. Thus, life is structured to a clear binary rhythm. They speak their language. They're spiritual. Ethos. And uh, his faith is the native faith over there. Though so many of the Anish uh, Anishinaabeg nations are so diverse, they do share some spiritual practices and beliefs. A religious society called the uh, Medewinwin, for example, is largely universal among most of these peoples and an important religious institution. We consider them hostile, and they consider us hostile, obviously. Esotericism, ritual celebrations, sanctity of nature. Obviously, missionaries are not allowed. They're into polygamy. Witchcraft is accepted, obviously, otherwise it wouldn't be esoteric. Obviously holy sites if they were ever there. If they were ever around here, obviously. So, on Togir, knowing him, since he's a man of diplomacy, I think he sensibly tried to trade with his people. We'll see. There's a 20% chance that he fails to negotiate a trade agreement that is acceptable to both sides, or 80% chance that he manages to conclude a trade agreement that is acceptable to both sides. I continue reading the message. 
Del Togir and his crew had difficulty communicating with Copin and his people at first. Eventually, they managed to reach some kind of understanding. Both sides to agree to exchange various goods. We gave them cloth, metal scrap, and so on, while they gave us some of their art, furs, wooden tools, and various trinkets. Togir tells me that if the expedition returns successfully, he will show me the goods he acquired from these foreigners. All in all, the meeting was a success, and he left feel like they made a good friend in Copit. I hope we find more friendly people like him. So that's a good outcome. Now there's a possibility we may get an artifact. Now we received a port from my fantasy agreement. So we got 79 gold from the war six. That isn't much. So, so it's not enough to make a profit from the amount of things I just spent. But something else also happened. Other hunters. During my trip, my hunters encountered another hunting party from Greenland. These, this other hunting party was also short on supplies of food and many of its members already died. Thankfully, my own party had enough supplies of food to spare and brought on the remnants of the other party along with them. Hunting in North Scissor is a dangerous affair. So such incidents are not unheard of in this cold, desolate North Scissor. The leader of the other hunting party, Horda Knutar, is internally grateful that my hunters were there to save his life. Uh, he even made sure to visit my estate in Greenland and return to his hunt for him. Um, no, different Horda Knutar. That's a different man. He's Greenlandic. Master hunter for the fine warrior. I'll try to give it a try. He seems like, would he be willing to work for me, at least? So I'll be spending 100 prestige. Although, this is a vain attempt. That I don't think he'll join, but at least give it a try. Oh no, he did join! Okay! Here's a reminder of you people. The Greenlandic culture. They are very similar to the uh, Norse culture of ours, but they're also prolific hunters and recognition of talent. In addition to being experienced whalers, just like us. So we got a Greenlander here. Poetry in motion. Bigger and uh, are walking in circles around the garden, chatting amicably. They pass the bench on which I am sitting, and smile and bid me a good day. As they resume their walk, I see a small object on the ground, likely displaced from the balcony. I'm about to call it when I realize it is a small, tightly bound scroll. My curiosity gets the better of me, and I start reading. While the lark slumbers every night down there. With Thorun I lay. Beneath the covers, I tell you the guards say, Beware the new day. A poem. A love poem about me? Oh, that's kind of a hard guess, because I would have suspected him. Well, here's the problem. Both of these are bisexual, so it's kind of hard to tell which one is which. I'm going to guess her as the author. A few days later, I casually joined him as her, she crosses the yard. I technically steer our conversation towards poetry, so I might discern if she is the author of the mysterious poem which I star. I'll use diplomacy. She's bewildered by my interest in poetry. Right. Cornwall's not a war, but when my son returns, we will declare war, conquer Cornwall, and he will take up residence there. And then we're going to vote for him. And once he's landed, give him all the concubines of all these women that are here at court, unless they've left already, and all that. Too bad he does have the luxury to go to the Varangian Guard, but... Oh well.
We gotta give you Marshall. You are studying warfare now. <sighs> you are about to lose. A message bird brings you a message from Togir with an update about his expedition to Vinland. Togir sent out an occasional scouting party to search for food and explore the earth. One evening, as one of Togir's scouts, uh, Petrus, did not return to the camp of his party. This is, of course, the most odd occurrence. Even though the hour was growing late, Togir and several members of the crew wanted to search uh, for Petrus' whereabouts. Other members of the crew, however, said Petrus was likely just tardy and would return soon. This could be bad or could be good. But knowing him, he's a impatient and a diligent man. I think he's such for him. Though it's quite a chance because this is a intrigue related thing. So either neutral or potentially good or bad. So 60% chance he's unable to find uh, Petrus who's wandering about 40% chance that he finds what he's been up to. I continue reading a message. Togir says that he and his crew immediately went searching for Petrus, even though the hour was growing late. Unfortunately, they weren't able to find him that night. The search continued for the next several weeks, also to no avail. Eventually, there was no trace of Petrus left. Everyone assumed they must have perished or purposely deserted him for whatever reason. The journey thus continued without him. So that was a bad outcome. Mm. If it was neutral, at least it would have been a much more improvement, but it's a success nonetheless. So we'll hear the final results soon. Well, you've lost the war. A stammerer. Huh. Break your axe upon our industry. That's kind of a badass model for once. There's no good stewards. Hey. I would love to have you over here, but obviously not. I guess I'll give you this position if it makes you feel better and makes you want to sleep at night. I know we've been at peace for long, but don't you worry. We'll fight a war against Cornwall sooner or later. No. You what? Cockold, my cousin. The scales tell slightly against us. Cockold? What? Confused. What do you mean? So, in other words, we're losing into that house feud. Oh, don't you worry. We're, we still got plans for war. A war which he cannot win. My husband is again absent from my chambers since nightfalls. He's been disunited. Also, thought very cynical. Am I not to his satisfaction? Is he simply busy or could it be warm with someone else's bed? Knowing he's been in Constantinople for long, I fear he's got another. That's what I fear. Do you have another? How can you even say such a thing, Thor? No, I would never take a lover. 
Seems Jinnarov said he denies my accusations. I have little choice but to take it to his word. The ships we sent on our expedition to Vinland have returned. I went to meet Togir and asked him about the various adventures he had during the expedition. Unsurprisingly, there was much to tell. It, fortunately, it appears the expedition was ultimately a success. During the expedition, he managed to acquire a lot of useful resources, contacts, and information while exploring this frontier region. There is no doubt that the boons of this expedition will greatly help the Greenland colony. Perhaps we could send another expedition to this region in the future. Well, it would be another great opportunity to earn more glory for ourselves. He also got himself a Native American trinket. Plus one stewardship. An item crafted by some peoples living in the mythic lands of the Western Atlantic. Perhaps it was a tool, or a work of art, or served some other unknown purpose. It was acquired by someone's travels to the regions west of Iceland, whether by force or through trade with those peoples. Its viability increased by two. Excellent. Put that on. So many trinkets. Okay, put that away. Put this on. Knight, now that you're back and you have the explorer trait, which is plus one learning and prowess, diplomacy per level of fame, that's important. Diplomatic range up for any expeditionary wars, naval speed a bit faster, and learn language scheme power if he wishes to use his free time to learn some languages. Don't you worry, Tokyo. You're going to have a place. We'll finally declare war against Koma. Conquer the duchy. Of course, if you do that, um, he will retain Koma after the wars. He has other holdings. Seize all of his territory as part of it. Tell the scales will be tipped in our favor. How old is he? Okay, what if we just conquer this end of Cornwall there and give him the land? Plus, there's benefits to it. This is the land of two castles. Zero development because it's been raided numerous times over and over again. Log forts. The other alternative is um, Dunholm. The temple. Development. All it's got is logging camps. I'm just looking. Yeah, I think up there is the better option. So, conquer Dunholm instead. Plus, it's closer to Norway. All I need to do is to take the objective. Okay then, here, be there in 59 days, and then after that you conquer, swing around, conquer the rest of Cornwall, then um, you have this, 
we be neighbors with them as we are and I thought about eventually fight a war against Sweden for um, for Lapland that's, that's my uh, idea Shouldn't take long. Gone home will be the residence where my son Togir is going to live before he will become the ruler of Norway. I step out of my tent and the siege camp sprawls out before me. A patchwork tent city. Stratting of rise overlooking the hundred of uh, not home. A hundred or hundred. Flags flap and flutter all over the horizon, and uh, various intervals of fire burns. Brazil's smoke and guttering flames light the scene with a flickering orange glow. The soldiers sit around holding tankards of meat, relax a small talk and camaraderie. Smoke from their fires drifts and fills the air. The uh, the smell of food cooking on spits by the bonfire grows stronger. My law retainer approaches and informs that the siege has ended. I gather my bodyguards head to the edge again. Under the dun home stands before me. A canyon of shattered walls. In the fields between empty carts and furniture frames smolder. Surrounded by bones of horses and shattered swords. Stray dogs pick the enemy's corpses clean. Shock survivors stumble through the streets amidst the rubble of raised homes. Spare it for once, because this is going to be the new residence for my son. It'll take four months to travel. Well, what's the alternative path? Like, why not to the sea? It are 48 days in January. I'm landing it here. Less than that. Wars are expensive, and with my treasury rapidly emptying, I'm thinking about how I will pay to keep my soldiers on the field of battle. <clears throat> 96 percent chance that I will improve the efficiency on my military budget. Plus, 100 stewardship lifestyle experience. So cut non-essential military expeditions. I am quite an administrator, even at war. Since the viability is now 20, I just want to look at it real quick. 20% chance. Okay, each percentage of the viability is a percentage. Each number to the viability is that percentage. So you probably want to keep doing that. So, maybe one day in a future episode we'll at least give that a go. Four level is three. This shouldn't take long. This is his capital. Take it, everything he has, and we win. A quick war. Not over yet. Go after them. I exit my tent. The siege camp sprawls out before me. A jumble of tents and archery lanes. Campfires and campfire smoke, canvas, and oil tosses. Oh, flags and banners fly in the damp wind. Bright colors mixing hopelessly in the great rain. Whereas the smoke of guttering flames light the scene with a flickering orange glow. The soldiers sit around, only tickets, relax, small talk, calamity. 
Smoke from their fires drifts and fills the air. The smell of food cooking on spits, but the bonfire grows stronger. My lord retainer approaches and informs me that the siege is ended. I gather my bodyguards and head to the edge of the camp. The hundred of Xanxta stands before me. My bonfire of flaming timber. The fields in between corpses lie in dank gullies, bloated and swollen by ravenous insects gorging on their flesh and theirs and ours alike. The hundred of Xanxta is soaked in blood. Rivets of it leading away from the many corpses sprawled like helpless animals in the muddy street. The groans of dying prisoners right, rise like a chorus. Limited looting here. And just imprison anybody you see. Because one of them may have an heir and therefore will improve things. Three months travel? Three months travel. No. This way. This way is much faster. We'll be there in for at least some odd days, 50 days. At least we gotta defeat them in a battle. They're gonna have the objective soon. So just go. As the battle rages on, I realize that there are multiple weak points in our front line, which are particularly vulnerable to an enemy spear attack. Screw to my men to cover the salt and air, and my voice breaks, and I realize they will not be able to hear me. Quick, I see them in my mind. You need to come with me, I command them and ask them in the direction of the weak spot. As we arrive, the enemy has already begun charging into the vulnerable gap in the line, so I rally the men to brace for a coming charge. Once we hold, I hear an enemy general shouting a muffled command. Followed by the groans of numerous enemy for them. What was that sound? I think before a rain of spears and gems begins to send over the shoulders of the enemy push. As projectiles slam into the men around me, one smack passes them into my head, excruciating close to penetrating my skull. As I turn in shock, I see the same spear dust over my head launched into the chest of a lifeless footman behind me. Jarred and stunned, I wallow away from the enemy charge and a nauseating mix of fear and shock. That could have been me. That was close. Way too close. There. Now we're even. Togir, land is yours. This is your residence. Interesting mustache you got there. But anyways. Those concubines I've mentioned. I'm going to give it to you, if anyone's still here. Some may not like you because they're Hindus, Vaishnavas in particular. And again, you're married to this one because I hope that one day, that at least... I mean, it may not happen, but hey, it's notable. Huh, too old, but still, that's notable. This is going to cause an automatic divorce. Okay, this man is the heir to this. But they're the same house as our kin. I don't know what they do over there, but it would be nice to have that. They're all going to be mad at me. But like it or not. There. So that's one for you, a Buddhist.
Didn't see an inheritable trait of mine. Crazy. No. We only took one of the two twins. Oh, you were betrothed, huh? Then you can have her as well. I'd say before the sacred he should have one concubine. That would have to be of Norse origin. <laughs> Don't want to get too mixed up, but I think that's the way it is based on circumstance. Let me see any of these. Oh, here's one you might like. She's the best candidate. If you're looking for someone that has diplomacy, she's the woman you're looking for. Oh, where is she? Ah, here it is. Found you the right girl. Soon those vassals will start to respect me. After all my lectures and shared wisdom, my ward, um, Kauri, has finally embraced the true faith. I know she always makes a good little heading one day. Odin guided my hand. She doesn't stand to inherit anything knowing that, but they're still connected in some way. want to kill her. Oh, wait a minute. That's from the house. Yes. The one that we're feuding with. Kill involved, ruler. Family focus. More fertility. Good. It'll make you have lots of children. That's what I wanted you to do in the first place, because there's a bottleneck in the in the line of Astrid and Thorun. I wanted that to happen. That's a bit of a disconnect. No, we can't build any further because we have not discovered any Romanesque innovation. Basically, it can only go as far as the ship's tomb. So, stop developing. Stop, stop, stop. I hope when the day he dies, then perhaps we'll conquer the rest of Cornwall and give it all to him. Not surprising. You're into diplomacy as well. Doing poor, and he serves who? Her. My niece will be the one taking over this territory. But they're expanding and intervening in their allies' war. 
They are determined. Should build a rune stone. <laughs> oh, I defeated my nemesis. Let's put it here on my capital. Just for bragging rights. You conquered Pomerania. That'll make you feel like a less than, huh? I even considered about conquering, uh, Brittany. But don't have enough dynasty members to make it so. Ergir, the explorer. Oh, they don't do warlike court anymore? They do valued administrative? Those people from... Moravia. Your faith stands above all, my dear child. Should be zealous. Again, you may keep the culture, but having you with a different faith would just be very, very interesting. Same reason why I raised the, uh, the other child here. Who is said to be charming. Who will one day uh, inherit. If I were you, I'd go for intrigue. Again, you won't hear Trikuta. Trikuta is down over there, which I remember that place long ago. It's doing fine over there. Well, there's still time. Life in color. What a delightful day it is! The wind is refreshing, and the sun is warm, insects chirp happily in the undergrowth, everything seems bright and vivid. It's all because that squeamish fool Hakon is finally blessedly dead. I can't contain my grin as a train of his friends and family filed past me on their way to say the last goodbyes. Though he can now can't say a word to stop him. I rattle somewhat at the thought of his family having the timidity to testily defend his honor. The procession passes me by, heading to bury the body. Oh, I'll show them. Getting ahead in life. The night air hangs still and silent. The only noise that can be heard is the scrape of my shovel, dislodging the freshly heaped dirt with ease. Slowly, the heap beside the grave grows larger and the body of Hakon is exposed once again to the fresh air it had been parted from all too recently. I ripped the cloth covering his face, his lips are parted, dawned back to the practice grin, and the soul and grave still clang damply to his neck as I regard him dispassionately. Grasping the shovel once more, I line it up with that same neck, the metal sharpened by my own hand earlier today. It's on the wicked edge, one stamp, Two stamps, three. I'll make you useful for once. I got a skull goblet. Skull of my nemesis. Here it is. An elegant but macro drink goblet. Formed from the skull of Hakon. That doesn't do well for the court grandeur and all that, but it's just something to have. 
something in the storage. He grew up hating me. This was a consequence of the feud. Oh, your feud will be over soon. You will soon no longer have a land to rule in. We're going to declare war again. But this time, we'll seize all the territory of it. And this title here will be destroyed after the war. We will end this episode after the conquest of Cornwall and give it to my son. And if I'm not able to, I'll give it to someone else who cares. Brittany has joined. That could be problematic. A pallid individual who looks as if she spent her entire life skulking underground. So look at the corner of my throat. I've heard tell you might want a secret passage at salt. I could craft any impure cord or your twist heart desires. I can even craft a discreet shaft between your bedroom and the kitchen to moist cake in the dead of the night. I'm a simple woman. A hidden escape passage would do. Never mind. You're all gonna gather there anyway. And then uh, once we all gather, we'll form as one army whilst it's in Cornwall. A little premature, but land here. Wait for everybody else. All president accounted for. Move on. Battle progresses. I take some time to sit back in combat and observe my forces and tactical decisions they need to make to ensure victory. During my time observing the army's strategic potential, I notice a handful of fighters from my own levies making significant progress on the flank of the enemy's charge. One individual in particular catches my eye. I watch them single-handedly take down four opponents on their own. Looking left to right, I observe the rest of my army and ponder the thought that I may need new fresh blood for my ranks at some point. As I glance at the young soldier fighting ability, maybe I should consider the skills as well. Who's that bringing to me? Let's begin the work. We got him. Step out of my tent as the siege camp sprawls up before me. A mass sticks of dirt, bodies, and humanity. The smell of it fills my nostrils. Found in the sweet, clean air. What an intoxicating smell. As such, a mixture of bodies, mud, sweat, and human waste. Flags snap and flow on the rain drenched wind. Everything is covered in a thick sheen of gray damp, like a mud laden lake. My low retainer approaches and forces at the siege's end. I got on my bodyguards and head to the edge of the camp. Here, again, at the Herald of Eskancasta. That's a different name, that's a Norse name of that same area. A smoking pyre, a gray shadow amidst the remains of my conquering army. Desolate wasteland of parched fields and smoking hovels dotted with blood and perversion. Witnesses to a nightmare beyond hell itself. 
in the fields between the dead and dying grown and burned, disfigured by flames. Stray dogs pick the enemy's corpses clean. Grieving widows sing out an agonized goodbyes to their husbands and children. Men, women, and children throng the streets, afraid and confused, worried, hungry, and lost. They child before the army, gaze up to the black sky, waiting for the world to shake itself apart and tumble down on their creeping shoulders. Oh, limited looting again. And prison anybody you see. You little man who's from Cornwall. There's a problem with that. He holds two of them. Well, you can't just kick him out. Because that's tyranny. And he'll rebel. Well, that's fine by me. One second. Bring everybody over. We'll be on top of you. He just died. Assassinated? I didn't do it. One fewer to worry about. Oh, gear. Shit, you killed him? What for? true soul. This man. This belongs to you. I'll even name you as uh, the Arrow of Cornwall. He's your problem now. But keep in mind, he's a feudal ruler. So I could mess with the contract a little. But obviously we don't have that kind of traditions. So, that'll do. The easing of tensions that is possible between myself and his own life. Seems to confirm that he has abandoned his vendetta against house, so good stuff. Died under mysterious circumstances, but it said it's killed by him. I mean, I knew it was him, but is that a secret that I should keep? Nope. So, it's hard to believe that I would be free of the worries of that threat. Why do I waste my time with this nonsense? What can they do now? That's the question. What can they do now? Hateful is now in the hands of those not as wicked as her predecessors. And she's my prisoner. And is the last living member. Even though she's only a girl. So I'll gain stalwart family for five, 25 years, which natural drain up, but multi prestige up. Look, they no longer hold any lands. So I think you should just let this go, alright? So we'll end this feud here. Move around to house arrest. She's not guilty other than just being a lunatic. But if she's going to continue to hold grudges like this... Does anybody want her? or you, Oh, you're willing to pay your own ransom. 
Okay, get on out of here. <sighs> End this episode here on 4th of July. So, now ladies and gentlemen, uh, we end the episode on that note as I've not been feeling well and the roost, the, the roost, the feast has been ruined by rival, but I think my health may improve, so I'm actually going to stick around a while longer unless I decided to, oh, I don't know, just do something very, very, very stressful where it further increases my, <laughs> further decreases my health and I just decided to end my life prematurely because why the heck not? You've yet to have any children with any of these women. None of them are pregnant as far as the eye could see. But do not worry. You'll be a family man. And you're also going to be the one to keep the Norway together. No matter what happens. And since we've learned that we know how to do these um, raids into faraway lands, and it kind of gives me a little bit of curiosity here, and that is, um, we'll just put this here. Is there anybody besides myself, like, who's good with... Aha! We just need somebody with logistics in, so we can add that to the... Uh, so, we, so this is just my plan for thinking about we should go back to raiding um, India but you need to be well supplied for it now maybe we should pay a visit again to um, deal with that mess over there especially down in uh, Trikuta you know where you know there's this one who is married to my son here but the problem is that children, uh, oh, it actually lives over there. No one who's set to inherit. Executed on my orders. So maybe we should pay a visit to Kalyani again, which there's this river. So we should do that again in the next episode. Just to try to make sure that some of our faithful will inherit some parts of the land. And, uh, and we wait for this other person who's, oh, a leper. Well, I hope he'll still be around to care so he can spread the faith into, uh, Karnata, which is that very kingdom that we speak of, which... Which will happen sooner or later, but unfortunately, she's got a walking dog to keep her alive. Yeah, we will definitely pay a visit to there. <laughs> the only South Indian kingdom I truly care about in terms of our interference in their affairs, even though we have no direct contact with them, but we just have indirects. <laughs> We're just trying to mess with their succession a little if we try to capture the prisoners and. Maybe. Oh, I don't know. I'm feeling like I'm gonna do some things I'm gonna be ashamed of later in life, but. But I hope your people will join us in the next episode when I go out and do those very things, if that's even possible. And then maybe we'll, when we come back to Scandinavia here, maybe we've got to take Lapland off of Sweden because they're starting to grow too powerful to my liking. I mean. I mean, yeah, you can do that. Where's, uh... Lapland? Lapland, uh, yeah, that's the one. That's the one we should be going for. So, we hope you people will join us in the next episode. But until then, so long for now.